going on YouTube? We've moved into the house in about September. It's February now. The big thing we're doing today is the last kind of big job upstairs that was left and that's the staircase. Uh, the guy that was originally supposed to do the stairs dropped out and it was kind of this custom stair that we wanted to do so uh, it was actually pretty difficult to find someone that I trusted to do the work. We did find a guy, his name is Ben. He's here today. He did a bunch of work uh, on the stairs in his shop. Uh, he's done a few mock-ups in the past and now it's the big first install day. So this episode is gonna be all about stairs. Let's go inside and check out what he's up to. He's just about to do the first tread. You can see it's kind of in place here. Um, we've actually put together, or we, I mean, Ben's put together a few stairs uh, at the bottom. It's been pretty tricky to figure stuff out because essentially the stairs were done at a uh, at 10 and a quarter, I think. And just buying like a typical stair tread from a big box store, they're about 10 and a half uh, inches, but that includes the bull nose. It was much more expensive to get a stair that's deeper. Uh, so we actually went and got just regular red oak stair treads from uh, Rona and then they, we cut it at the angle to match the stair. I'll show you a little bit of a detail in a second. Ben's gonna run you through exactly how it's put together. I went to high school with Ben. Essentially I figured out he was doing woodworking through um, his Instagram. So his Instagram's eastern.woodworks or eastern woodworks. I'll link it down below. You should check out the kind of quality of work he does. So I trust that he's gonna do a really nice uh, job on these stairs. I'll let uh, him run through the actual construction of the stairs. Uh, three quarters of an inch thick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take two. For the stair construction, the challenges we had is the front of the stair is angled and that replaces the typical nosing that you'll see on stairs. So um, typically you've got about a one inch nosing and the tread will be an inch thick. So you've got a half inch radius that gives you that half round on the front of the step. What we did on this step <clears throat> that's different, Hugo designed an angle, which you can kind of see here. And uh, the angle ends up being around eight degrees um, for the stair to give you a one inch nosing uh, that way when you walk up the stairs, it's comfortable. So the tread material we used is one inch thick solid oak. And here you can see that we've kerfed the bottom at the front and the back. What that allows is for the PL Premium to uh, penetrate the material a little bit better and give uh, a better bond. When we're bonding the tread to the actual framing staircase or the plywood underlayment, um, it's really important that you get a good bond and a good um, uh, that the two materials come together nice and cleanly. So that prevents squeaking in the future and uh, it's really important with stairs because they get a lot of traffic in a house. The riser of the stair, so the face that goes up, is also solid oak and it's three quarters of an inch thick solid oak as well. So what we had to do is we had to design the tread with an angle on the back and an angle on the front. And that allows the tread to sit flat and then the riser to sit on an angle. And that gives us the nosing that's required by the code for the stairs to be comfortable when going up and down. We also put biscuit joints on the back of the stairs and a groove underneath the nosing of the front of the steps and that will be able to accept a biscuit right here. And as that biscuit is accepted in here, it will be received also in the biscuit joint in the top of the riser. And that gives us a better connection. So we've had a couple hiccups trying the first few steps because since there's no stringers on each side, we've got to cut basically the angle, the slight angle that the drywall sits at on the right of the step and the left of the step. While we're doing that, we still have to keep the front of the step square. And we've got to keep the alignments of the biscuit working. So it's been uh, a bit of a process, but we'll show you how it's all coming together here. At the back of the step here, because our angle we found out was just a little bit too steep, um, we had to cut the store-bought treads. We had to cut the nosing off of them. That left us with a 10 inch tread. 
and with our angle the way we had it designed initially we basically didn't have enough tread to have a tight measurement here so what we're doing is we're using paint sticks with pl and pins to shim out the bottom and we're leaving the top as is and what that does is it kicks out the face of the riser at the bottom just a little bit just enough to close that gap riser and each tread belongs in the actual stair where it's getting measured because of the drywall and um, the framing is never quite even uh, it's really important to mark each piece individually for the risers and the treads I use two different jigs uh, these ones are called bar gauges and uh, they're really simple it's uh, two pieces uh, of wood that can just be cut to any size so all it is is these two pieces held by these two gauges and then this screw tightens them so what I can do for the riser is I marked the bottom and the top and the inside dimension. So I open this nut and push the two sticks out until they make contact on each side. And that in turn will be more accurate than measuring would be because the inside measurements with a tape, uh, the tape tends to bend and it becomes really, really difficult to transfer an inside measurement evenly. And then also you're eliminating the chance that you'll make an error uh, when recording a number. With the riser, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush up one end and then the other. And <clears throat> when I make sure that these are flush, I just feel it with my finger. And um, these are beveled on the end to give me a nice little contact point. I can also use my speed square like this and just make sure that these are flush. Then I can come to the other side and flush up. Well, this pencil right now could use a little kamosava. So I'll use a sharp pencil or a marking knife or a push mechanical pencil to get a fairly accurate mark. And what I've been doing so far is I've been marking just a bit outside of this gauge because it's handier for me to leave myself a little bit of leeway just on the off chance that the drywall expands a little bit as the, the uh, piece creates like a pressure fit. So I'll mark the bottom, and then I'll mark the top, and then I can move my gauges out of the way, and I'll connect the two lines. When I connect the two lines, that's going to give me a straight cut. For the tread, it's the same concept. Uh, we're using a slightly different jig. Uh, this one has two wings on it, which allows me to, one, see if the drywall is bowed or cupped or wavy right away, uh, because the piece is straight. And then number two, it references the front, the back, and every point in between if it is a straight cut. So I can adjust these wings and these uh, nuts here. So I'll do that until it fits tight on the inside measurement. So once I've got my gauge installed in the base where the tread is going to be installed, I'll remove it carefully and I'll put it on the actual workpiece. And that's when I'll transfer my mark. So again, sharp pencil. And I'm marking just a little bit outside. My pencil line has an actual thickness. I'll leave the pencil line when it comes the time to cut because um, it's easier for me to just sand up to the line with a belt sander or a power planer than to try to cut directly on the line. So now that I turned my miter saw with the one degree uh, angle, what I'll do is I'll just set the teeth down and just kind of run them back where the cut would occur. And now I can see that I've got a little bit of a gap at the back and at the front, I'm a lot closer to my line. My saw needs to go this way. So I'll make an adjustment. I'll tighten this down.
we've run into a couple challenges. Um, it's just difficult to get everything to line up with the drywall because it's, it's never quite straight. Um, so we're going to need to do a little bit of drywall patching here and there, but that should be all right. So basically what we're doing to start is we're putting the riser in place first. So I've got one riser and then the next one, and then I'll slide the tread in after that, which allows it to butt tight on the back side with the glue line on the back. And then I'm sliding <clears throat> the biscuits on the nosing into place and running wood glue along the top of the previous tread. And then the whole thing sandwiches together and these biscuits should hold that front joint tight. Then we're doing PL all along the tread which will bond to the underside of the oak. The kerfs that we put in there should increase that bond. And uh, the PL will harden and stop any squeaking. And then we're shooting two inch brads through that, which uh, will later fill and sand uh, prior to finishing the treads. I guess that will do it for the stair video. I waited months to actually film this outro and of course we picked a gloomy gray day to do that so you can't even see how bright this place really is. Hi, your ice cream truck. Do you want something? Kinda. Of. Do you want something? Yeah. Okay. Well, it was a pleasure having you over at the house and as always, thanks for watching. Like this video. No, don't put that one. Stop judging. Please like this video. My name is not Hugo Bill. Like, subscribe, and bell. However you want to say it. I know. Please like this video. Subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. <laughs>